Hey guys, Josh from the Ancient History Guy here. Hello and welcome to all. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Anyways, today we are going to be diving into some ancient Greek history and back to the good old city of ancient Athens we go to talk about tyrants. Specifically, we are going to be talking about how the Persians schemed to reinstall a tyrant back into power in Athens and how ultimately this plan sort of, well, failed. Anyways, let's get into it. Now, to understand the story, we must first look at what being a tyrant in ancient Athens actually was. You see, the modern definition of the word tyrant is a cruel and oppressive ruler. However, in ancient Greece, this was not the case. More often than not, a tyrant had to appease to the people in order to stay in power. This meant that quite a lot of time, tyrants were actually quite lenient and supportive of the people they ruled over. Hippias, the subject of the story today, was actually known to be a patron of the arts and commissioned many religious building projects in Athens and abroad during his exile. Indeed, being ruled by a tyrant who they could easily replace at any time with another tyrant was actually preferred to most Greek states than being ruled by an absolute king. This was again because if a tyrant wasn't fulfilling the people's wishes, the people could just simply get rid of him and replace him with another. As a result, there were tyrannies all over the Greek world, with some of the most famous examples being found in Ionia and Sicily. Athens specifically had been ruled by tyrants for generations. Indeed, Hippias was only the latest in a long line of tyrants ruling over the city. His rule was actually fairly good, this was until a plot to replace him resulted in the death of his brother, who many believed was actually joint tyrant with him. Hippias' rule became increasingly more authoritarian, with political allies being executed and exiled. As mentioned before, the reason why the Greeks preferred tyrants over kings was the fact that if a tyrant got a bit too, well, tyrannical, they could just replace him with another tyrant. Hippias' actions were beginning to encourage other factions within Athens to look for suitable replacements, and so armed unrest began to become pretty common. As Hippias could no longer trust his own people to remain in power, he began to look outwards for military support, deciding on that the Persians offered the most reliable form of military support. This was not without its own merits. Persia, after all, just conquered the lands of Ionia and had, in an effort to rule via the customs of the people under its command, installed many tyrants in the scattering of Greek cities on the Anatolian coast. They supported these tyrants with military aid, mainly being ministered from the region's capital of Sardis. Sufficient to say, by this point the Persians had a track record of keeping tyrants in power, and if certain needs were met, they would have been more than willing to help out Hippias. As a result, Hippias began wiggling his way into the Persian court, hoping to convince the Persians to help him out. Of course, this scheming with a foreign power to bring foreign troops to Greece did not go down well with, well, the Greeks, at all. As soon as word of this potential military alliance with Persia came to public knowledge, the families of Athens almost immediately began plotting to overthrow Hippias. Their worries were echoed by the Spartans, who, after much debate, decided that an Athens ruled by the people would actually be easier to control than one ruled by a tyrant. With this, the Athenians began revolting, all while the Spartan army stormed the Athenian government, expelling Hippias and making Athens a democracy in the process. The question now was, well, what do we do with Hippias? After the bloodletting that was the forming of the Athenian democracy, the Spartans suddenly decided that an Athenian democracy was actually quite a dangerous notion and so attempted to recall Hippias. The goal now was to reinstall the tyrant they had just expelled from the city back into the city. This plan didn't exactly go to plan, as when Spartans announced their attention to their allies, they all collectively decided that it was a bad idea and forced the Spartans to change their minds again. Hippias returned to Anatolia, there he began to make plans to reinstall himself as tyrant of Athens. The Athenians, wary of this, sent a letter to the governor of Sardis saying that it was a bad idea to listen to exiles. Surprisingly, this did very little, and the Persians just responded by saying that if the Athenians didn't butt out, they were just going to invade. It was not long after this that the Greeks of Ionia decided to revolt. Athens, perhaps seeing this as a chance to get rid of Hippias once and for all, decided to join with the rebels, sending enough military aid that the rebels were able to sack the administrative capital of the region, Sardis. However, they missed their opportunity to capture Hippias, with the rebels soon being pushed all the way back to their cities. The Ionian revolt quickly came to an end, and now Hippias and the Persians had the excuse they needed to invade and subjugate Athens once and for all. Hippias went on a flurry, giving the Persians all the information they needed in order to land a successful invasion force on Athenian soil. It's largely thought that the Bay of Marathon was handpicked by Hippias himself. 
As a reward for his efforts, and he was probably the best bet the Persians had at maintaining control over a subjugated Athens, it was agreed that upon the capture of the city, Hippias would once again be made tyrant and would rule on behalf of Persia. This of course did not go to plan as the Athenians were able to catch the Persian army off guard, literally driving the invasion force back into the sea. The Persians, unable to capture Athens due to the fact that their army had just been wiped off the face of the earth, began to retreat back to friendly territory, with Hippias finally dying on the return trip, thus bringing any chance of the tyrants returning to Athens to an end. So what do I think of this? Well, I think it's fascinating that even when Hippias was in exile from the city, he was still able to maintain a position of power and influence. I also find it slightly funny how the Spartans were all in on the idea that getting rid of the tyrants of Athens would make the city easier to control, and then when Athens erupted into a political mess in the formation of their democracy, sort of went, oh dear, what a big mistake we have made. I also find it amazing that Hippias was able to basically keep the deal that he made with Persia going all the way up until he died. Anyways, those are my thoughts. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.